Well, welcome to Serious Social, or actually, it should be welcome to the jungle, the Jumanji jungle, one of my favourite films, mostly because I just adore Jack Black, but also because it's filled with good hearted humour. In the story, four teens get sucked into a, a Jumanji video game, updated, and, and have to complete a quest in order to break free. I won't give too much away of the plot, so, so you can enjoy it if you've not seen it before, but I do want to talk about the map. The Jabaji map reveals itself in stages as the teens sort of level up through the game. It's filled with riddles and misleading signposts, and it's a beautiful, beautiful analogy for a social customer journey map. And creating a customer journey map is essential if you want to deliver brilliant customer experience. And next week, the co-op, Business EQ and Sprinkler will be sharing their best practice and thoughts on customer experience. And I'm just going to pop that link into the ticker so that you can find it. And um, you're very welcome to join us and ask loads of questions. Anyway, back to the map. We all understand the journey steps. Awareness, consideration, purchase, experience, loyalty and advocacy or, or, or whatever thingy you call it. You know, everybody has a different journey. And we get that it can be a funnel or a loop or realistically a kind of scribbly wandering path to purchase. Um, and the customer journey mapping is a challenge at the best of times because of this. But adding social into the mix while essential adds another layer of complexity. And many marketeers tend to set up a single touch point of data, usually around last click and conversions, but you need to be smarter these days because your customers demand it, they want more. I mean, the digital customer cares more about convenience, relevance, and a seamless journey. They want to experience, and they are not wedded to where they shop or how they buy. It is the whole relationship with the brand that matters. So consumers expect brands to know what information they need, regardless of where they are and how that interaction takes place. But it isn't just customers that are driving the need to maximize every single touch point. Marketing itself needs to be sharper. Let me let me explain. One, let's just take one minute. One, one element, right? Social advertising. I mean, Facebook and Instagram ad spend is up 60% on last year and advertising costs on social platforms grew more than 30% across the board. Ad space is more competitive. So you need to fine tune and optimize across the journey if you're going to get to, to deliver results without continuously upping your budgets to beat bid prices that are escalating as demand rises. The answer is in understanding all the potential interactions and mapping those touch points that a person may have with the brand. That way, marketeers can tailor connections, maximize relevance and build a position that efficiently joins up the journey to deliver better results. OK, before we start on social mapping, you need to look across all your customer touch points. You need to see how social is connected to your TV campaigns, your press, your e-commerce site, your delivery and and the impact it has on search. You need to understand how and why audiences bounce between social and search and your website and your stores and so on. Because the purchase journey is becoming more fragmented with each audience using multiple channels and media to find answers. And you need to factor in something else, which is really challenging, which is the darker channels. So Radium One estimates, for instance, that 84% of sharing of content is happening outside of social networks on channels like email, instant messenger, and SMS or text or whatever we call it these days. Um, and it's imperative to understand that, that as a consequence, social is leaky. I'm, I'm always saying social is leaky. It is leaky. It spreads and connects all your channels. And that means social holds the power. Digital Marketing Magazine says that 74% of consumers rely on social media to guide their purchases. And 60% of people say that they interact on social media with brands they buy from. Social media holds more power with consumers than ever before. And that's why a specific map is needed for social. It's kind of the fulcrum or the hub. It's kind of where all those comms kind of gravitate to. Um, with the wider map in place, you can now look at your Jumanji-like social map. 
Jumanji-like, because in order to determine the the touch points, you need to work in a way that kind of unravels each section and reveals the clues to the next step. You're on a quest to find out how consumers navigate through and in and out of social and how that impacts the journey. So let's start by dispelling a couple of myths that social, you know, that we have around social media. One is that social media is one channel or one touch point. It's not. It's a bunch of different channels in different formats, targeting different audiences who have a very clear idea on the purpose of each channel and what it provides to them. So you can't look at them as one big lump. And secondly, that social is only valuable at top of funnel or bottom of, bottom of funnel. I wanted to say boffle there, but I don't want to use acronyms. <laughs> In other words, it's only useful for awareness and driving traffic and leads. But actually, that's not true. The sales, the, the Salesforce brought out this latest report, which is the state of marketing, and it clearly shows social is active in consideration, research and recommendation phases, and all the way through to the other side of purchase with customer reviews, advocacy retention, and of course, customer care. So how do you create a social map? Before you get into the data, you need to shuffle backwards and take a look at your personas. The reason is that each persona will have a different journey. For instance, parents looking for to, to buy a, a family car will have very different journeys, intentions, motivations than maybe a newly minted driver buying their first car. In my experience, too many audience personas and segments sit in dusty cupboards, unused, or focus solely on demographic outlines that are too sketchy to differentiate. But in truth, you can't create a map if you don't know where you're going and who you're going with. Every target audience segment has a different path to purchase, so start here. The next and probably the... <laughs> The most essential element is the data. So social listening, which goes beyond looking at mentions of your brand or your com or your competitors. Did you know, for instance, that according to Brandwatch, 96% of online conversation is unbranded or brand agnostic research. And for those marketeers just evaluating their followers on their profiles, research shows that 96, nearly all of conversations of the people that discuss brands online don't follow those brands owned profiles. You need to throw the net a lot wider. You want to uncover the complete picture, understand all the touch points. And to do that, you need to think more social intelligence than monitoring mentions. Look at conversations in your sector, understand how people talk about your industry, your products, your services. And then blend that social data with insights from market research or, or, your, or your own customer surveys. The wonderful thing about social data is it captures public um, unprompted conversations. It lets you kind of delve into the psyche of your audience and see how customers use social to inform their intentions to buy. There is a downside, though, of course. You knew that was coming. <laughs> Uh, the downside is that data is unstructured and it takes time to get into a framework. But once done, there are such insights to be had. Did you know you can plot conversations against the customer journey? We shared the social journey to travel purchase before the pandemic. We were able to identify how um, on social to optimise booking time. Uh, uh, and we found that it, it really, we could see this really big spike. It wasn't the only spike, but a really big spike in people booking as soon as they'd come back from a holiday. And, and, and that was because they were sharing pictures, beginning to dream of how, what a great time they had. And so they were booking again. Of course, the journey differs by persona, by sector, by product, but you get the gist. Um, you can uncover how your co consumer wants to interact with you and the optimum ways to do so. With your map plotted and your data, you can now start to look at where you can affect change. Wait, that Jumanji map has changed. Social platforms evolve quickly. The content trends, the formats and algos shift constantly. Every time a new feature is rolled out, your business has another way to connect with its audience. The platform changes and launches, of course, have impact. I mean, just look at Clubhouse, um, and it's pushed a real land grab for audio amongst Twitter and Facebook and, and bloody everybody else, basically. But that isn't what you need to watch when revising your map. It, it 
actually, it's back to your customer behaviours. That is where you look first. How is it changing the way um, people are making buying decisions? You need to work that out. So you, so you go back to your data framework from the touch point mapping phase, and you want to hang on to it and keep reviewing it. But that's not enough on social because you need to keep testing. And actually, part of understanding your journey is a continuous test and learn. And it means you don't have to go back to the drawing board every time something changes. Instead, the rhythm of trialing becomes a way of keeping a close eye on behaviors and being ready to leap on changes or even make little weeny incremental changes. So with your audience journey mapped and the rhythm in place and keeping it fresh and flexible around channels, what else is there? Well, I mentioned before about how leaky social is, and I said you should map the wider journey first. That's because so often the next step in the journey from social is broken. For example, you see posts about a great pair of shoes. That, that would be me. And you click it. Uh, you're kind of inspired to click and buy more or learn more and 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 you leave Facebook or Twitter or wherever it is you saw them and and you land on the homepage where I've now got to search for the shoes and it's a really rookie error you got me all excited enough to leave the network where I was having a conversation or looking what my mates were doing and you've now made me jump on a site where I've got to now work hard to find what I want and guess what I do I swipe back to the social network and forget all about you. And that is, I, I see it all the time. Part of the planning will help you identify these critical touch points. It could be integrating your PPC strategy with social to ensure people who are inspired on social will then go and find you on Google quickly. Or is it smarts to connect up your marketing with your customer service to build consistency in your experience or, or find a request on uh, or, or send out a request on email for social reviews so you can trigger action that you know has impact. Identify those buying stages that need attention, where they go and what they do once in social. And that also means that people may stay in social. And increasingly, the, the, the social platforms are encouraging this because they want you to stay there and make a purchase in channel, in feed. And that means that your customer is, is now thinking, how can I make this easier? How, how can I make it easier? And you need to be thinking, how can you make it easier? And how can you share the purchase, get them to share the purchase with friends and family? So you need to make this shift from one touch point to another as frictionless as po possible. Deloitte, for instance, reports that 29% of social media users are more likely to make a purchase on the same day of using social media. That means that once they see a product, they click and they buy. That's quick. You need to make it easy because you don't want them to go away and go, I'll do that another day. The report also says consumers who are influenced by social media are four times more likely to spend more on purchases. Now, if that's the case, should it be that the landing page they end up on helps them increase their basket size? So there's every reason then to get granular with each element. There are, these are the holes in your map that prevent your customer from moving um, into purchase and then on to post-purchase stages. So the aim of your social customer journey map is to enable you to create an experience that captures attention in all the right places, builds relationships and moves your customer e ever closer towards the end goal. Now, if you knit that together, that map with emotions and behaviours and trends, you're able to then define and design your customer experience. So that's what we'll be talking about next week. I'm just going to throw the, 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 the notes up in comments so that you can see where you can sign up for they are so you can see where you can sign up if you want to come and join uh, myself the co-op business eq and sprinkler while we talk about how you take this map into that world of customer experience i really hope that was helpful mapping is is complex and challenging and there's no way you can explain it in 15 minutes but you can jumanji that journey by looking at the data building in flex for the change and ensuring that your journey connects and joins up with your mark your wider marketing efforts have a absolutely cracking weekend and we'll be back next week with another serious social thanks mm -hmm.